I'm Tadej Mazurik from the Classics Department. Uh, we've embarked on a hybrid Latin project uh, to uh, develop a hybrid curriculum for our beginning Latin students. Uh, we embarked on that a few years ago. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about hybrid uh, learning, uh, uh, but especially to present to you our experience of putting this all together from the ground up uh, with our Latin uh, curriculum. Uh, that said, I know several of you uh, here uh, have direct experience with hybrid uh, learning and instruction, uh, and I know many of our come on and yeah, many of our other uh, language departments are already doing this. So I don't pretend to present myself as some kind of grand expert on this field. And uh, maybe we could take the opportunity, in fact, to uh, talk about other languages that uh, have hybrid instruction as part of their curriculum. I know that Irish has uh, worked hard to develop that. As, do you have first-hand knowledge of it at all? Or yeah, do you report I'm, back what the status of it is? Or? It's, it's going quite well, yeah. It's, um, yeah the, the, the students seem to enjoy it, and uh, it's kind of adds a different flavor to the course. Okay. And it's my understanding, too, that you all built something from the ground up because there really wasn't anything out there for you to just uh, adopt wholesale, as is sometimes the case in other modern languages. Uh, any experiences from Romance languages? Anybody have to know here? Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but I know they, uh, you know, in Italian, it's a big part of the Italian curriculum, and in other uh, Romance languages, uh, uh, they have uh, adopted the hybrid uh, method or blended method of instruction, kind of wholesale. So, uh, as is the case with Irish, I think, uh, uh, so is the case with Latin, uh, that we don't have um, just a ready-made uh, modules from our publishers of our textbooks that we can just adopt uh, and just use all of their materials that are so rich uh, in the online format. So we have to uh, start from scratch and proceed from there. Uh, more about that shortly, uh, but if you indulge me a little bit, uh, I don't want to Again, presume that I'm some kind of expert on blended learning or hybrid uh, instruction, but just to maybe it might be of interest to you all. And there's a bibliography that I've passed around uh, that may have some things on there you haven't seen before. Uh, here's here's an extra one. If you have a few extra. Pass one back there. Thank you. So. For whatever reason, we ended up calling it hybrid instruction. Another, at least as well known term for it is blended learning. Uh, uh, some others uh, use the term mixed modality. So the idea is to create a blended learning environment that brings together the best of face-to-face -face learning uh, and the best of online learning. Uh, but the proportions vary for that. So everybody's model is a little bit different. Usually there's a cutoff at somewhere around 20% of uh, learning is needed to be done online for the course to be considered truly blended learning or a hybrid uh, model. So that's pretty much where we are with our beginning Latin curriculum. Uh, uh, we have a four credit uh, beginning Latin sequence. Uh, students used to meet four times a week for 50 minutes. Uh, each, uh, and now we only meet three days a week for 50 minutes, and the fourth credit hour, as it were, is uh, to be done online with our self-graded uh, Sakai exercises. So again, I feel I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, to those of you here, uh, you, you know that this model is uh, increasingly popular at the university level. Uh, it uh, is expanding in all disciplines, uh, and certainly uh, with the vengeance in foreign languages. Uh, why is that? Well, it uh, provides more flexibility for adult learners, for students of different learning styles, um, and it uh, frees up classroom space. So administrators like it, administrators like it too, because uh, it's shiny and uh, technology is being used, so that's always uh, good from the administrative point of view. Uh, and so because it combines face-to-face uh, -face learning with online learning, uh, ideally it appeals to all learning styles, that is students who do better face-to-face -face, as well as students who are self-motivated learners 
maybe even slower learners who like to be deliberate in their work and they could do it on their own time, uh, do the online exercises. So again, in theory, if it's done well, uh, you get the best of both worlds, uh, a healthy portion of face-to-face -face contact time with students, uh, as well as uh, this uh, uh, tech, tech, technological support uh, alongside of that. So the technological support can uh, take many forms. Uh, uh, again, uh, you know, you can uh, converse with uh, people in foreign countries, uh, listen to or watch foreign uh, TV uh, um, shows, uh, dramas, whatever, and bring that into your classroom. So that's a type of hybrid learning, too, bringing that into your face-to-face -face time and supplementing what's going on face-to-face. -face. Uh, but uh, ideally, or at least as far as the definition is concerned, if you bring that into the classroom, that's different than having students work on the technology outside the classroom. So, so that hybrid model blend uh, uh, assumes that outside of the class learning is being done in at least a 20% uh, ratio uh, to justify that label of hybrid learning. So uh, in my, it's been my experience uh, that uh, this online work that students do uh, uh, especially benefits those who are self-motivated learners. Uh, and so I think the next one, right, this is the Open University in the UK is very big on this. Uh, they have a lot of adult learners, people who have jobs and want to supplement, you know, what they're, you know, they're, they only have so much time in the week, so many hours to do the learning, off hours, uh, late night, uh, what have you. So it, it brings people into the educational fold as it were into academia who otherwise wouldn't uh, simply have time for it. So it's, again, a model that's uh, really uh, growing uh, within higher academia. So the uh, Association of the Departments of Foreign Languages um, clearly is an adopter, a supporter of this methodology. Uh, as, again, I, I know many of you know, uh, they emphasize something in their report from 2014 that I'd like to keep coming back to uh, in my presentation to you here. If you've tried this, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that uh, in order for uh, hybrid learning model to succeed, you need the support of administrators uh, and especially of uh, especially technological support. So I'm a trained classicist. Uh, I'm not an expert as Guswinda is in educational technology. Uh, I'm, I'm, I approach this as a classicist. I, I know how to how to fashion questions that effectively. Uh, test students or drill students, uh, I don't have the technological expertise to build all of this up and to support it, nor do I have the time for that especially. So I've leaned heavily on uh, the support of our IT specialists, the Swindet, uh, Cane-Up Center, uh, uh, and others to help make this possible. If you don't have this, uh, and I, you're really uh, you know, uphill, uh, swimming, uh, uh, upstream without the paddle. Um, but fortunately at Notre Dame, I think we do have good support for this, so uh, by and large. Yeah. So with the original push, it came from the faculty and then got buy-in from the deans? So uh, correct. Uh, with our model, uh, we are decided to be trailblazers in this field of hybrid lab instruction. and. Uh, Later on, I'll show you what other schools are doing, similar things. Uh, but we are trailblazers, and in part, our goals were to uh, um, in increase enrollments by reducing that fourth off hour to allow you know, schedule conflicts to be reduced, uh, as well as to uh, hopefully just increase our students' knowledge of Latin better, uh, to move a kind of growth memorization and work with forms and morphology offline and to free up class time with doing higher level things. And at that point, of the, you know, if there was any trepidation in terms of whether it was just a sign-off or So I guess we didn't officially get Dean's approval. We did get support from Elliot Visconti's office and the provost uh, initially to kind of a seed grant to get us going. Uh, and then we've uh, received uh, not so much financial support, but uh, labor support from the Up Center to help us do the technology that we need. Uh, but now that you raised that point, we've been offloaded now. So now that we've kind of come to close to fruition with this, uh, we are expected now as a department to fund a student aid to maintain this. 
as a part of my job is to train that person and to, uh, so to me that's a problem. I think we, 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 we should have better support uh, than having to offload it on an individual departments and take over the cost and the burden of this, in my opinion. So I think there's good support at Notre Dame for launching the, this. Uh, there was for us, but not for maintaining it. A little more on that shortly. Uh, 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 all of you know that. Uh, so this is, you know, we were trying to create an experience to come up in a different way on the question uh, that, that take advantage of the best things that we saw happening in the, in the modern languages. Again, uh, we didn't have anything to plug into, so we needed to start it from scratch. Um, so the studies I've seen, uh, all of these are cited in your in bibliography, uh, talk about the, the benefits of hybrid foreign language instruction, so zeroing in more on that specifically. Uh, the, the research shows a benefit, but uh, you know, a, a slight benefit. It's not like this is a cure-all or some kind of magic pill that's going to get our students uh, you know, to learn uh, uh, Italian better or French or what have you, or even Latin. So, uh, but again, as trailblazers in this field, I think we're just at the beginning of this revolution in technology myself, and I think it's important for all of us in all our disciplines to, uh, to, to hack, a, hack a trail through, and uh, be the first through in the case of Latin, certainly, uh, and, and see where, to create a foundation and see how we can build upon that in the years to come. So, uh, again, you keep on uh, seeing these points uh, uh, highlighted, the flexibility. Uh, uh, it's great for, it's definitely more, more beneficial for the self-motivated learner, uh, less so for others. Uh, and in general, uh, uh, the studies, uh, compiling all of the other studies uh, that show us a slight benefit. So a slight benefit is a benefit. So uh, let's keep going, we, we figured. Uh, and now specifically uh, turning our attention to, to Latin. Um, there are very few, pro well, I, I'd say there's no other Latin departments uh, doing anything exactly like what we're doing. Uh, there's a few doing related things. Uh, we had, thanks to the funding by the CSLC, uh, Frances Titchener from Utah State. She's and her program there are doing the closest thing to what we're doing here, uh, but their model is different. Uh, she came and gave a talk in this room a year ago. Um, <clears throat> their model involves a lot more of one-on-one -on -one mentoring than, than we have in mind here with our program. Uh, there's a board at the end of the bibliography of the third page on an experiment uh, being launched currently at the University of Kansas uh, in hybrid Latin. I'd like to follow up with them. Uh, recently, uh, this is a growing uh, program in uh, the classical world. The Paideia Institute have uh, implemented uh, di true distance learning, so not hybrid model, but true distance learning. Uh, but it's sort of, uh, you know, for takes of the hybrid model, and that uh, there are weekly uh, meetings with the professor online. And then finally, this last summer at Catholic University, uh, launched uh, some hybrid Latin courses. Uh, it's my goal uh, this year yet to get in touch with them and to see what exactly what they're doing and how we might be able to collaborate with them. So uh, you can see the slim pickings and nobody's doing exactly what we're doing as far as I can see. Uh, so very early stages of development. But uh, you know we are one of these early adopters that White speaks of. Uh, and we are figuring out how to do it, uh, seeing the benefits, the, the, the problems with it, and uh, setting the stage uh, for others who uh, might benefit from our work. So uh, again, more zeroing in more uh, from the hybrid model to uh, foreign language, hybrid learning now to our very own experiment uh, in a case study in hybrid uh, education here at Notre Dame. So I mentioned that already. Uh, our project was launched uh, with some faculty uh, subcommittee work in the summer of 2014. So uh, that's five, coming up on five years ago now, uh, time flies. Uh, but we, it's taken us, I guess, five years, kind of think, to reach uh, a stage at this point where I, I feel pretty good about what we have and, uh, and all of the kinks have been worked out. And uh, it's a really solid product that I would like to package and take to the next level. 
So uh, we worked at it for over a year to lay the foundation, uh, to create the framework, uh, figure out what uh, LMS or what uh, platform to use. We ended up going with Sakai or Notre Dame LMS. Uh, we uh, offered a soft launch uh, in the fall of 2016, and then in the next semester, uh, we did a hard launch with Latin 1 and then uh, did a soft launch with Latin 2, uh, meaning that uh, for as of spring 2017, students were being graded and held responsible as part of their final grade in the class for the work that they did on the Sakai. So soft launch means we're using them as guinea pigs and uh, working out the kinks of the system and uh, or, or it was imperfect in that it didn't have uh, all the questions we wanted there for every chapter. So as of fall 2017, uh, we've done the full launch, so we're really just completing our second full year, our fourth, we're in our fourth semester of sort of the full curriculum being launched uh, in this hybrid fashion. So I mentioned to you already that 15 to 20 percent of our work is being done uh, by the students in these Sakai exercises as we refer to them. Uh, and again, uh, it's forced us to, well, forced me and my teaching of the beginning Latin when I teach it, and I encourage others who <coughs> teach it uh, to uh, rethink how, how we use class time. Uh, so that before we did uh, uh, a lot of morphology work and uh, vocab drills and other kind of uh, transformation drills during class time, uh, but now we need to keep reminding ourselves that that's being done uh, by the students on the Sakai. We need to keep reminding them of the importance of doing that. And then we use uh, class time to uh, work on translation skills, uh, higher level work, uh, sight reading, uh, Latin text, and so on. So it's, it's opened up class time more for doing that. And having taught with the system now for, for several semesters, I can say that I don't feel the lack of class time as I thought I would with the loss of that extra 50 minutes because of the reasons I just explained to you. Yeah. Do you feel as though the students are taking about 50 minutes to work on the uh, class time, or is there a little bit of off So I think that they, they're not only doing 50 minutes more work, but probably a couple of three hours more work with the Sakai exercises. So that's the idea. Is it's not just replacing 50 minutes, but 50 minutes of class time mm -hmm. plus an hour or two of homework that you would do for that class. So I think it's, I do think that it, it's taking them that long, and uh, some of them complain the fact that it's too long, which is not such a bad complaint as far as I'm concerned. But uh, we, we have more on that later. Uh, so the way we set it up originally, and I think I, I like this, how we work with it now, uh, for a few semesters, is that we, they can do every drill up to seven times. So the idea is not just once and you're done, but to uh, allow them to come back to it. So they have to do uh, a chapter's worth of exercises for every chapter, but then when the test comes up a couple weeks later, the idea is they can go back and redo uh, the Sakai exercises to prep for the exam coming up. Uh, and some of them do actually do that, and the way we have it set up too is that for many of the exercises, I'd say for maybe half of them, when they retake a quiz, it pulls from a pool and it populates a different word in there. So they, they don't see the same quiz twice for about half the time. So again, I'd encourage them to go back and just not doing exactly the same thing over and over again. So uh, students come up to me after class and show me on their cell phones, you know, something that they were doing on the Sakai exercise. Not warms my heart uh, that they're uh, doing, you know, Latin on their, on their cell phones. Uh, that's definitely... Uh, approved by the Vatican use of your cell phone. Uh, and when they're doing these exercises, it's 100% time on task. That's one of our goals as educators, as you all know. Uh, so that's one benefit of this you know, technological work that they're doing with their Sakai exercises. Uh, in class, we like to think they're all paying attention and following along 100% of the time, but we know that's not true either. So again, that's a, that's a benefit. Um, I have tried to devise for, uh, to accompany every one of our chapters, higher level vocab work and a little exercise I call vocabulary in action uh, that uh, uh, works with their new words, with their new vocab words, but in 
higher level ways that are not just saying what does this word mean or matching it up to a picture, which I wish we could do in Sakai, but we can't. Um, uh, but asking them, like, what's the, what are Latin antonyms for this word? Or what are other synonyms you know? Or which one of these is not a synonym of this word? So uh, I'm putting things together, for those of you who know Latin or declensions, you know, what are the word, what, uh, what other words do you know that's in the same that follows the same pattern as this word? That's in the same declension as this word, or that conjugates with this word. So I'm asking them to process information, make connections with what's come before, um, uh, in, in, a, in a higher level way that I'd like to think than uh, just the vocab quiz, which is what you usually see online, by the way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but again, I'd like to think we take it to the next level. I mentioned that point already. Uh, but one great benefit of, and one main reason why we adopted, uh, you know, one great benefit of Sakai as an LMS is it does have great diagnostic tools. So you can log into there, track each, look at every exercise to see how well students are doing on a particular exercise. You can punch up students' names and see how long they're spending doing their work and what their grades are. And so if a student is having problems in your class, you can... Uh, you know, one of the first things I do is let's see how you're doing on these Sakai exercises. So let's identify some weakness here. Are you spending enough time uh, doing this? So I think I already mentioned this along the way. Uh, so, you know, whatever you like to do in your class, whatever uh, exercise you think is valuable for your students, if you offload some of the road work uh, to the, the Sakai exercises, to the, the hybrid portion, then it opens up class time for doing whatever you want to do uh, during class. So is there some way, Goose Window, we can post this, the PowerPoint, in case anybody's interested, we can see us, I'll see you. We can talk about that afterward. So I'm happy to do that as well as provide a digital copy of the bibliography in case that helps. So, uh, you know, problems, so it's the downside. So uh, I you know, make every minute count, I guess that was my philosophy. Uh, to bleed every minute out of every class time in general, but it's even more important now uh, that you have 50 minutes less uh, every week to make every minute count during class. Uh, so one, one thing I've learned along the way too is you gotta keep, uh, when you're teaching, mentioning to the students that, hey, there is this uh, hybrid portion of the class, most of them do it uh, anyway, but it's important, I think, to bring that into class time as well, and so it, it's not seen you got to make it clear to the students that it's an important integral part of the course and not just a sidebar over there. Uh, so I try to bring in some exercises every now and then and show, put them up on the board or if I say, hey, everybody's having trouble with this, let's have a look at this sentence here uh, from the Sakai exercises. Uh, some mention of it. Uh, sometimes I ask students to do work uh, uh, part of their homework, they have to do a, a, a answer a, a drill on Sakai regarding their homework sentences. So that then when they come to class, I can assume, hey, I know you worked through this on Sakai. Are there any last minute questions? Or let's play with the sentences, let's transform the sentences. Here. Instead of just translating what's there, we can work with the sentences and again, take it to the next level. Uh, so I mentioned some of this earlier. Uh, I want to be sure to mention our wonderful Sakai team and Laura Cero has been such a help uh, to us in developing this project. Uh, CSLC and Chris Clark at the KNF Center have been uh, extremely helpful. I, we couldn't have done this without uh, those folks, so thank you. Uh, so, uh, for better or for worse, uh, we are wedded to Sakai. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, there's some good things about it, some bad things about it. Uh, amongst the, the, the problems uh, for us is uh, that macrons, or, you know, the long marks on over vowels that we want our students to learn when they're learning Latin because it helps them when they're reading uh, orally as well as to pronounce the words correctly as well as when they're scanning and reading uh, Roman uh, Latin poetry. Uh, so the problem is you cannot make a, a macron in Sakai without a lot of trouble, without a separate keyboard alongside of it essentially. Uh, so what we have to do is use capital letters whenever there's a long, to indicate a long vowel. And this has proved uh, very frustrating for students, and I don't blame them. Uh, so it's definitely uh, on my wish list that uh, the Sakai engineers would fix that problem. Another problem we had up until this semester is that uh, there was no immediate feedback possible for students taking quizzes. So uh, if we have time at the end, I, I can show you how they used to have to check their answers. So they'd have to go to a whole different screen 
Just go all the way down, look at the, what they did wrong or right, and then come back to the original screen, hope that they had the same quiz pop up for them, and then correct any mistakes. <coughs> so understandably, it's very frustrating for them. Uh, and so now we fixed that problem so that they can just click the button and see if they got something right or wrong. Uh, so it makes it kind of easy to get everything right in a sense, uh, but again, for the motivated self-learner, uh, which most of our students are, I think it's a great improvement. So uh, we'll see how, how, they, how students evaluate that uh, as of this semester. It'll be the first time we've implemented that new system. So I just wanted to share with you some of our CIFs uh, from over the uh, years. I, I don't want to belabor this and uh, read every single thing there. I've highlighted and read some of the uh, criticisms uh, that we've uh, gotten for this system. Uh, ingrained some of the positive feedback. So uh, what you see here is a pretty, uh, pretty. Well, sorry. Uh, I guess I can go to the next one too. Sorry. Did you do you want to enjoy some of those? <laughs> So this balance between frustrating and helpful, even in the very same sentence, uh, that's what we were seeing a lot. So it's frustrating, uh, but it's good for me. Like, uh, like I did, like taking your medicine, you know, I mean, you may not like it, but it's, it's good for you. Uh, but we're hoping that the interface now is, more, is less frustrating for students. So again, tedious, uh, but helpful, learning the grammar. So very helpful. Some students are just 100% behind it. Others are, are very much the opposite. But again, I love this within the same you know, sense of from coming from the same students. And so with this tedious and frustrating, again, that's what it, we think we've addressed. We've taken these criticisms to heart, and we think we've addressed that with the, with the innovation as of this semester by giving them immediate feedback. Annoying but helpful. <laughs> Great. I help somewhat, but not as much as the other. Okay. Fair enough. Mostly it felt like busy work, uh, and I could see I could see that. But sometimes busy work is necessary too. Confused and frustrated me. All right. So we'll put you down for no. Annoying but helpful, but should not be eliminated in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Progress. All right. Take that. Thumbs up. Uh, declare victory. Uh, extremely helpful. Uh, they help me. Uh, and uh, just to highlight this, I felt that the exams came more naturally as a result of the continuous work with the Sakai. Some students felt otherwise, that it didn't do a good enough job uh, preparing them for exams. So I still got my eye on that part of it. Too lengthy. Uh, we mentioned this before. Uh, okay. Uh, but I think that time is going to be reduced now that we've provided immediate feedback. It should automatically reduce the time it takes students to do these by a good 30%. Okay, well, tell me what you really think. Huh? I hated the Sakai exercises, uh, and but this is this is this is legit. We're repeatedly going back and forth between the exercise and the grade to see the right answer, and, and it really was a problem. All right, so helpful, uh, and you know the, the drills, uh, very helpful, uh, and getting me to understand the lessons and getting the actual practice. So again, 100% time on task. Very helpful in morphology, which is you know how the words ch word endings change uh, for verbs and for nouns. Uh, potential for being helpful if it wasn't so extremely difficult to use, and the student mentions those macrons there. So we haven't we have no fix for that, but we are able to fix this other critique there. So extremely frustrating. So I think we're almost to the end. I think I've got some from this last semester. Here we go. The last slide on this. Uh, especially with the long vowels, yes, uh, we agree. Okay, there's a positive one uh, good to apply what we learned. But, uh, more confident of uh, the material, so that's positive. Good way to practice. I like the freedom it allows. So I saw we saw a couple of three of comments along those lines. So I thought like on the phone or you know whatever, wherever they do their work, you know they can be in their dorm room, they can do their Sakai, do work under Latin in this fashion. Uh, Freeze up their time. <laughs> okay, again, I think we got that addressed at this point. Uh, so this student disagrees with the other one, saying that it doesn't, it's not as well geared towards the test as it should be, and there's, there's something to that. Uh, we can always be improving what we do. 
This is my personal favorite, uh, a new one. I never, I never learned this term before. Are you familiar with the high key useless? No. <laughs> okay, that's a new one for me. Uh, I like that high key useless, meaning very useless, I assume. Uh, but again, my understanding of Latin would have greatly suffered without. <laughs> so it's like so many of our C you know, CIF smart courses. Some students love it, what you're doing in the course, others don't care for it. Uh, so a similar balance, however, uh, uh, we also asked in the CIF additional questions. Uh, uh, this kind of exercise has helped me to learn Latin better. Uh, how would you reply to that? <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that was not on the CIF. The student told me that in office hours, so I wrote it down uh, like that. Uh, so, you know, if you absorb this information here for a few seconds. We've got 85 students now over five semesters. I think we're, you know, reaching a critical mass. So, you know, it's roughly a third. That's it. That don't think it's helped them with their Latin work, but approximately two thirds that, you know, give it the thumbs up. So, I'll we'll take that for now. Especially since some of the early semesters were problematic with a lot of errata and more technical challenges. Uh, another, the other question we've asked them on the CIFs is. Uh, would you prefer, I think this is really the, you know, where the rubber meets the road, would you prefer to come to class instead of doing it? Okay, I know you don't like it, but would you prefer to come to class? <laughs> so again, I, I think of those who express a preference, you know, there's a decided preference for, for the hybrid model that we've developed. And again, my, I'd like to think that as we, as we reduce the frustration level, uh, that this will, will only improve in our favor. So uh, to finish up, uh, and then if you want, we can have a look at some of the actual exercises if you're interested. Uh, part of my job is to constantly keep improving the content. Uh, I have a, a, one aspect of our uh, hybrid work. Uh, I talked to you about the Sakai exercises, but something else that I'm developing is a little uh, video, a little MP4 files that go, uh, uh, PowerPoint talkovers uh, to accompany every one of our chapters uh, in Wheelock. So that helps, uh, and I didn't mention earlier that many times our sections of Latin are taught by graduate students. So part of our goal too to get back to that question is why I do this is to provide a, a framework that uh, all of our faculty instructors, but especially inexperienced graduate students can just plug into, have this, all of this uh, kind of serve to them on a silver platter uh, and know that we have consistently good uh, instruction in beginning Latin. Uh, so, for example, those videos I, I make up, or you know, I think, would be especially helpful to graduate students and they, uh, and their students. Uh, uh, now that we've kind of got it perfected, as I mentioned, one of my goals is to, uh, to uh, create um, sort of dummy sections uh, within Sakai, so that uh, incoming students, let's say students coming into Latin two, who've done some Latin over the uh, um, in their high school work. Uh, and then over the summer, we can uh, make the hybrid exercises available to them and say, you've got to work through chapters 1 through 20. That's what we do in Latin 1 here. You're coming into Latin 2, that starts chapter 21. You need to go through all of the uh, Sakai exercises 1 through 20 mm -hmm. so you know that, and then you hit the ground running when you come here in August. Or same thing over Christmas. Or same thing for Latin 3, or inter if you're beginning intermediate, we can make available all of the Latin 1 and 2 content to you, and you've got to work through that before you step through the door on the first day of class. And Sakai will allow us to track to see you know, what students, who, who did that and who didn't. Uh, so this is ongoing too. Part of my job is to work with our faculty instructors, and even more so with our uh, uh, graduate students, uh, to make the most of this hybrid model that we've developed. So, uh, so that sort of internal work within the department, uh, uh, taking it to the next level and spreading uh, the word uh, to others in the discipline, other universities. Uh, worked to talk to, to Guswinda a little bit about this, and he presented at a Sakai lunch and learned earlier this year about the OERs and uh, trying to find the right one there uh, to the right way to spread this package uh, of uh, exercises that we've developed to others. Uh, and I mentioned, I think, I mentioned all of those already. So if you had any questions for me, 
that'd be great. If not, I'd be, uh, I got it set up so I can show you, actually show you what our exercises look like if you're interested in that. Uh, Have you used this method to you, uh, learn another language? Or just like to? So our design is all focused on Latin instruction. I'm not quite sure I understood your question well enough. Um, but obviously the hybrid model is used for instruction in other modern languages. Language. Like, like Portuguese, is it useful? Uh, I don't know about Portuguese. I, I know for sure French, German, Italian use it so that they don't even use textbooks anymore. It's just fully on, uh, online support. And I know others here can testify to other languages. Spanish well. So Spanish, of course, yes. Uh, Irish, though. That's a type of it, but not quite that. I imagine something's out there for Portuguese. It's somewhat less <coughs> commonly taught uh, here, but yes. So if, if Sakai is kaput in five years, what happens to your program? I got you covered. <laughs> uh, I've been working with technology enough to know that so that all of our exercises have a master Microsoft Word document file. So whenever we correct any mistakes to something that we see in the Sakai exercises, we do it in two places. On the master copies that are totally separate, and then in the Sakai format. So if we ever change LMSs, uh, I've got the master documents formatted in a proper way so that they could, should be easily imported into whatever LMS. And I'll, that's something I've got to work on more to make sure that that's true, uh, to make it uh, to put it in a format so that others at other universities can just take it, download it, like in a zip file, mm -hmm. pop it open, and import it into their LMS. That's my goal. One of my goals. Yes, excuse me. And, and also, uh, some of the LMSs, most of the LMSs has what they call SCOM. It's a, like a it's package. A yeah, yes. And then it allows the, the, to download the file and then put it in another LMS, kind of like, and then be able to I mean, it won't be perfect, but you can still have uh, the appearance like your exercises come um, greatly, so you can just tweak some of the stuff. But usually, I mean, like SCORM allows the, uh, the transfer of those files and exercises from one element to another one. And if we go to uh, Canvas, maybe, so <laughs> Canvas is a great, they usually make sure that they have uh, SCORM available to uh, take other learning management systems uh, exercises. Thank you. Yeah. We'll, we'll be talking about that. Yeah. So we, we find it's taken us four, four semesters, four rounds to uh, eliminate all of the errata and the tweak, the tweak the problems that we had so that now finally we're at a stage where we can do this and start spreading the word out to other universities and programs. Yeah. So knowing what you know now, what would you do differently for the Portuguese setup? Uh, compared to the learning of the current view Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's been a hard road to hoe for five years. It's been a lot of work, extra work, not just for me, but for others uh, to make this project happen. Uh, I, I, I still think on the good days that it's been well worth it. Uh, on some bad days I despair. Uh, but my days of despair are much, many fewer than they used to be. So now that we've gotten to the other you know, end of the project, I can see the benefit of it and the benefit that it would have for the Latin learning community in general. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, I think the modern language instruction has, would have a different setup and a much more heavy video, audio, video, uh, video component than what we have with Latin, uh, or the prompting, you know, proficiency work and speaking. And so if you're teaching a modern language, it would be along a different model than what we're setting up here with Latin. Uh, but uh, I kind of go back to my rich, one of my original points, which is that you've got to have the support of your department chair, of your colleagues, uh, if you're going to do this, of the dean on your IT staff, of you know, the administration and technological support. If you don't have that, and many smaller colleges don't, uh, I would say don't even start this. But that's one reason why I want to get, get it out there, because I've already done it, and now they can easily you know, bring it into their LMS. So that's you know, part of what my desire is to spread the good news of the classics in Latin. No question. Usually people, they go from face-to-face -to, -face to hybrid and then
transition to online. Some people do that. Is there any... Pure distance learning? Yes, true. So are you thinking about going fully online through distance one day, or you prefer to... Um, I haven't thought about that. Okay. I, you know, teaching here, I don't see a particular mm. need for mm -hmm. that. Uh, but it's obviously a direction that higher education is moving in to make more and more, you know, totally distance learning opportunities available. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see this as being a component for that. So this could fit as part of a, a truly digitally learning Latin experience. Mm -hmm. I don't see why not. Uh, if you're using a pu one of the limitations is that it's tied very much to our Wheelock textbook, which is the most common textbook used in higher ed for teaching Latin. Uh, but it's not used by everybody, and some people don't care for it. So it's it's definitely tied to that. So if you're doing distance learning with Wheelock, I could definitely see this package being very helpful. So it's flexible in that way. So let me show you some of these, uh, and I know people got other places to go. Uh, so this is our you know welcome page, uh, and here's a little instructional video to uh, introduce students to how how to use this uh, this hybrid system. Uh, we have uh, a number of resources available here for every chapter, uh, and within uh, every chapter you've got uh, various handouts and uh, uh, miscellaneous written drills, as well as uh, for the earlier ones, see here's an MP4 file. So uh, you can punch that open and hear me talk over a PowerPoint about the material in Chapter 3, Copper Means Chapter 3. Okay, so that's uh, alongside uh, the core of our uh, online work is uh, access through the sidebar of the chapters one through nine. And then again, because they're just starting out here in chapter one, we're reminding them about how to use the long capitals for long vowels and things like that. And then, so for every chapter, they've got uh, exercises here. There's a, this takes you offline to a, a drill site uh, on the web, which vocab drill site. Uh, but the core of what we're doing, maybe I'll go to chapter four. Uh, and so this is this is the material that uh, I've devised over the years uh, to at the core of our hybrid experience. Uh, so uh, I love Sakai. <laughs> you say as student. Have to go through that again. So I don't know how well you can see that. Uh, so uh, we're being asked here to uh, identify the stem of every noun. Uh, and so you, the students have to write in oh, cool there. Uh, what the great innovation has been this semester is that, uh, let's say you write that, you go here to the show feedback button, and it tells you the answer right there. So I got it wrong, I did something wrong. Uh, oh, I wanted me to put the hyphen in. So again, that's a matter of frustration too. I got the STEM right, but technically I got it wrong. That's actually a great example of the problem that the students face and the frustration. So now they can see, oh, I just got the stupid little dash wrong. So I'll go back here, uh, add in my dash, and then I go on to the next exercise. Okay, and so there. So previously what they'd have to do, let me just get this one wrong on purpose. Uh, Previously, what they'd have to do, instead of just going to the show feedback button, so I got it wrong, I had to put in two L's I had to put in, they had to go exit out, uh, go back to exercise archive, scroll, oh, all the way down here, and then find their, and they would have a list of, you know, eventually of dozens and dozens of exercises. Find their exercise and then click on the right thing to see what they got right or wrong. And if they got something wrong and they wanted to correct it, well, they had to go back, all the way back up here and correct it. Okay. And sometimes by then they would have received a different word in a blank. So they couldn't even correct it, right? So very frustrating. I, I don't blame them at all. But now, again, with that simple little addition to that show feedback button, I think we've addressed that that problem. Uh, so that I could should just show you one other maybe a type of exercise. Those are like fill in the blanks. 
Um, here we have a reading based on our dictation. Okay, so here's an example of a reading comprehension passage, a little bit higher level stuff. So we're asking students to read a passage in their textbook for this chapter, and then we ask them questions, comprehension questions about that chapter. So this is again something that sometimes students do before class in preparation for class, and then we go over the passage, but I can assume that they've already know this stuff, or sometimes they just read a passage that has not been assigned you know, for homework for doing in class, and it's just something totally different, and they answer comprehension questions like this. So some fill in the blanks, uh, some multiple choice. What I'd love to see in Sakai is being able to drag and drop. Uh, I'd love to see uh, an LMS where we could have flyover. You could have a passage here of Latin, flyover blanks, and then you choose three or four options. Uh, like you can in Moodle to just select the, the, uh, the right Latin word to go into the blank. But uh, it's just not that user friendly. So that's all I have for you. I appreciate your interest and questions. Uh, I'm happy to keep showing you other stuff if you're interested. Yeah, uh -huh. Once you put in chapter four assignment the questions in the, the drop down layout, is it be possible to take two or three sections from there and move it to Capita XI instead? Or do you have to delete it and then create it in the new? Um, once you have it created in one chapter, moving it to another chapter takes some some work, but it's you don't have to recreate it from scratch. You can basically copy and paste. Not quite that easy, but uh, that's not too hard. But, but that's the kind of thing I have my student aide help me with. So I tell him, yeah, we need to change this and move this from here to there. And uh, after he's been trained, he, he's able to do that for me. Can, can you create a draft version before you publish it to the students can view? In terms of stuff that you're creating for the class that you don't want to release uh huh. Um, no, so, no, I don't have draft version. So if, if I come, I'm, we've reached the stage now, certainly, where we've got so many exercises per chapter, we're good to go. If I'm making a new one, I'll just work on that one and then publish it for the next semester round. So it's kind of hard, given the limitations in Sakai, to make it active for the current semester. But it's always perfecting it for the next round. Uh, so usually, I don't take the trouble to just distribute that to my students. I, I guess I just don't see the need for it. But I could, I guess. Okay, well, this is a question for, for maybe Guswinder. Are you, I mean, I'm thinking this would be great for ancient Greek as well, but does, does um, Sakai not support um, alphabets that aren't Roman alphabets? Like, I mean, would they support ancient Greek alphabet? <laughs> Or maybe um, East Asian languages. Or, or I was just thinking of like Russian. Well, well, Could you do? Yeah. Yeah. It does support yeah. East Asian. Yeah. It supports East Asian. So, so, tech, so theoretically, it should be able to support Russian or Greek. Or I, I can't. I can't imagine if they. If we have so much trouble doing macrons, doing accents in ancient Greek would be very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but. Okay. Uh, I was just curious thing. So I would. I've done more for sure, but. Based on what he said, there may be some issues with the diacritics. Okay. I myself feel like Sakai is sometimes still in a DOS world. Uh, you know, the way it, it thinks and organizes information. So. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you again. Well, thank you all so much.